why we are trying to look into this digital marketing gap is because it is very fast moving. So there is an issue with the ideas of people not being able to catch up with all the new technologies, all the new networks and all the new uh, facilities that are offered to us as a facilitation of communication using new methods. So the other interesting thing is that uh, out of a survey that was conducted last year, only 9% of marketers are confident in what they are doing. So if you think about it, so there are 9% of people around the world confident in digital marketing. And what's more interesting is that last, uh, that is, I believe it's in May, we had uh, the landmark development in terms of the investment. So we had uh, the UK was in 2009, I think the American 2011, where the advertising spend, so that means all the money that organization community really spent on uh, digital activities has surpassed uh, that of TV advertising. TV advertising was before the place to spend money on advertising sort of channels going forward. And that is obviously a very big issue because there are a lot of money being spent on an area and there's only 9% of people really know what they're doing or feel comfortable with what they're doing. Okay, so, Abonenti na YouTube. Okay. For those of you from Bulgaria, do these logos signify something for you? What is on the left side? Vivacom? Okay. Uh, what's on the right side? So, left Vivacom on the right. Channel Planet. Channel Planet, brilliant, okay. So, how many of you know how many of these uh, uh, channels have YouTube subscribers? Any guesses? Vivacom, uh, just for those of you who don't know, what does Vivacom do? So these are experts in telecommunication. I believe they are one of the leading brands in Bulgaria, right? Yeah? So you would expect them to be hot on digital marketing channels-ish? Perhaps not. So, no? And uh, what does the other channel do? Music channel, right? So it's entertainment, perhaps the audience is a bit different. So how, if you were to, I mean, obviously you might know this already, but if you were to think about the number of subscribers on YouTube in terms of the channel of subscribers, how many do you think there are for the brand on the left and how many are there for the one on the right? Four on the right and... F <laughs> okay, and how many on the left? So we're thinking 10, 100,000, 1,000, 500. Okay, well, I'll put you out of your misery. Okay, Vivacom <laughs> has 1,000 subscribers, Planet Official 657,000 people. Okay, so here's another bit of quiz. Does anybody know the uh, gentleman on the left? <coughs> Sorry? Don't worry. And the brand on the right? National Television, right? Okay. So we have a massive brand that's been going for decades. And on the left, we have a, a vlogger. So this is a gentleman who, share, who loves online gaming and he shares his online games experience with the rest of the world. Well, I'll uh, reveal. So Podin40 has 1.9 million people subscribing to this uh, yeah, webcast and uh, the Bulgarian national television 7,942 as of yesterday. So what does it tell us? So essentially, we have a brand that's existed for many years on a traditional format, and bearing in mind the statistic that I've mentioned to you before in terms of the amount of money that the European sort of digital marketing community is spending on online advertising, we're realizing there are far more people is now shifting the budget on those uh, new channels, and we realize that individuals, so people like you in the room, I anticipate that nobody's representing the national Bulgarian television, 
So, but uh, ultimately, if you think about each you as an individual, you will have as much influence if you understand your audience and if you are able to deliver the content, and you will have a much bigger impact on the world of digital marketing on communications. So this is a concept that we refer to as micro-influencers, and essentially these people, although they might be just an individual, but they have a much bigger engagement rate and much more power within a particular niche, okay? The Bulgarian national television is an expert in many things, but what digital marketing does is that it allows you to connect with experts around the world, and not necessarily just based in Bulgaria, but everywhere else, but obviously it's a great opportunity for you to engage with those people and move forward. So what does it mean for those of you who are in business and working in, in, uh, in a channel or interested in exploiting these digital channels of communications? Well, obviously, there are certain things that need to be put in the row. And uh, we like ducks. So marketing, uh, we suggest that should be the first point of uh, consideration. It gives us market research, understanding of our target audience, who we are uh, speaking to. Then we need to think about the skills within our team to deliver those uh, messages. And hence, we have produced you with the relevant course and hopefully material. And you need to finance it, produce it, and put it into operation. So for those of you, can I have a sh quick show of hands? How many of you are from an organization or working for an organization? Right, okay, so we've got half of the room. How many of you are just students uh, thinking about uh, working in digital marketing? Okay, we've got three students who like to admit they're students. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Nobody else uh, is there. But uh, when we teach digital marketing for businesses, one of the biggest questions that company directors such as the Bulgarian national television phase is that we need to have a digital strategy, but we don't really understand what that means. You see, there is a small problem, but by being digital, it is more than just scanning all the uh, files and then converting into a digital format. It is about not having to print those papers and not having to think about printing the documents uh, in the first instance. So if you have systems in place that don't rely on paper receipts or paper copies, then you are sort of on the way to become digital. And ultimately, this is the biggest challenge for many organizations because conceptual understanding is a first stumbling block. But once you're beyond that, so you're thinking, OK, so it isn't just about scanning our paper copies. It is about thinking about the processes and engagement process that doesn't involve us to create paperwork. And that's obviously an exciting thing uh, to, for a business and organization going forward. So the digital marketing strategy is essentially something that is going to be a long-term commitment for an organization and something that you are able to uh, develop and build on as you uh, uh, go along this uh, uh, new way of engaging with your audiences. And uh, over the last... Uh, Two years, we have been writing a book, working with obviously our European partners, and I'm really uh, uh, pleased to see so many industry partners who have contributed, and some of them are in, in the audience today. So we've got uh, a keynote from Olga who has provided us with some feedback on how we should approach this, and it's really good to see that we have an opportunity to combine both academic perspective as well as the commercial, the real world perspective on how digital marketing actually works. And one thing that we have developed is a conceptual understanding, something that senior marketing directors in an organization know that what they need to do is have these five building blocks ready for their organizations. So the first building block is for you as an organization to decide what you want to do as a digital marketing channel. The one on the right is your buyer persona, i.e. the person that you're targeting, the person that will be buying your services, or the person who might be uh, benefiting from your services, not necessarily purchasing them, but uh, consuming the information. And central to this digital marketing strategy is content. Whatever we like to say, but ultimately the internet is a very sort of uh, uh, democratic thing. So if your content isn't good, people will stop watching your video or they will stop watching your live stream and then they'll flick onto something else and watch something that is actually more interesting and more engaging for them. And if your content isn't necessarily responding to the buyer persona, to the, your target audience's needs, it becomes obviously irrelevant. So going forward for this, the channels and the data are the things that are also quite important for your strategy development. So, okay, so what are the business objectives? What can a business do when they engage on digital channels? Well, a number of different strategic uh, uh, forums for uh, digital marketing communication, and this could be affecting marketing. 
So marketing in its basic form, understanding what people are trying to see, uh, understand, understanding what people are talking about, understanding what people are interested in in terms of their uh, needs for products and services. Sales, developing relationship with key influencers, as we have seen in a couple of slides before, understanding who the influencer is, and then for a brand or an organization, develop an understanding what the brand is interested in and that influencers are interested in, and working with those influencers and developing those uh, uh, productions of content or business and services going forward, that's uh, useful. Operations, as I mentioned to you before the example of the National Health Service, digital doesn't mean scanning something that's in paper into an electronic format. Ideally, you don't have to print your communication in the first place. So ultimately, what you're able to do is to think, okay, so we have a system in place that is uh, all around uh, so allowing us for customers to place the, their order and then be able to deliver that order without us having to print out any paper and ultimately communicate and capture that information with the customer. And last but not least, we have the support. I know Twitter is not popular in Bulgaria, but Facebook is. For people who have posted a question, for example, about this event today, uh, if they were able to, had, if they had the question, we had brilliant response from Alexander, who was able to uh, uh, pr respond to all the questions in the national language. And obviously, that's a really useful way of use of social media, where you are able to interact with people in a much better way uh, going forward. So on the other side, we've mentioned the buyer persona, and ultimately the target audience, or a number of different uh, aspects that you might want to think about when you're developing the buyer persona. In the same way that I ask you what is the most popular video sharing network in Bulgaria, for example, you are able to collect that information and write it down. So for your brand, because for many organizations, you might have a team, or for small organizations, you might have an individual who is perhaps dealing with people outside of your organization. But unless you have got it written down, what are your strategic priorities? So for example, the goals, what is the person interested in? So what is their average age? So what do they look like? Uh, what is their bio? And most importantly, what are their goals? So your brand is trying to solve problems for people. So what is it that the buyer or the person that will be purchasing your products and services is interested in? So if you're able to understand what the problems they, are, they face and how your products and services uh, solve those problems, you are much more able to provide something that's actually very useful in, in terms of doing that. So in digital marketing, we have something that's called keyword research. I don't know how many of you heard of keyword research. Yay. Brilliant. So whenever you are trying to type in the keywords into a Google AdWord Planner or Answer the Public and you're typing it in, it also provides you with some alternative questions or some alternative uh, problems that people might be facing. This is your first stage or one of the first stages to really understand what problems that particular person is facing. And that's really important for you to write those things down because ultimately whoever is formulating the strategy is very sort of not necessarily going to be aware of those things every time they're writing a press release, every time they're writing a blog post, or any communication going forward. So your goals, frustrations, bio is obviously quite important. Okay, the next point is uh, content. Marketers have been using a three-step mental model of marketing for a long time. Stimulus, like developing a TV ad. Shelf focusing on point of sale, which has historically been called the first moment of truth. And experience. People take the product home and experience it. They could have a good experience or a bad experience, and they share it. This is the second moment of truth. If marketers spend time on these three steps, they should succeed, right? We investigated this theory. We conducted a comprehensive study with research partner Shopper Sciences using 5,000 shoppers across 12 categories, from groceries to cars and financial products. The goal, show where influence takes place as shoppers move from undecided to decided. We found that the average shopper used 10.4 sources of information, up from 5.3 sources in 2010. We asked shoppers what sources they used to make decisions, when they used it, and how influential is each source. When we lined up their responses, a fourth step appeared in the marketing mental model, the zero moment of truth. This is when consumers do their research, get smart about alternatives, read reviews, look for coupons and comparison shop, all before going to the shelf. When we compare the steps, the zero moment of truth pops up as highly relevant and influential. Consumers have changed the way they have approached decision making. As a marketer, 
Have you kept up or are you still using the old mental model? There's a new mental model now and marketers that can now keep all these steps spinning gain a very competitive advantage in today's marketplace. By influencing the people who are really passionate about your brand, so the micro-influencers that we mentioned before, working with those people, getting them on board, you as a brand are able to shape your digital communication. However, if you don't engage with those people and if you leave the zero moment of truth pretty much sort of untouched, and how many of you use TripAdvisor? Yeah? So how many of you write a review on TripAdvisor? Yes, brilliant. So if I said that there is an amazing hotel in uh, Sofia and uh, it had uh, really bad reviews, so there is my voice against thousands of other people, so would you be going to that hotel? Maybe not, because actually there are far more people out there who really don't have a great stay. So chances are you will not have the same great stay as well. So from a hotel's point of view, it's really important to keep an eye on those reviews and obviously making sure that those reviews are being at least responded to. Obviously things might go wrong, but actually use that information as feedback and you feed it into the communication and say, hey, there was a really bad leaky bathroom, but we have fixed it and we do have now hot profiteroles, which is the exciting things that we need to eat nowadays apparently. Anyway, so the other thing that we need to worry about when we design the content is the uh, channels. A number of people say that social media is very important, but one of the biggest challenges with social media is that it is mostly on a much more awareness building and much more brand awareness building uh, uh, activities and is much further away from the actual purchase decision. So whatever happens on social media doesn't necessarily directly impact on somebody purchasing your goods and services. And this is sometimes very difficult to stomach for a, company director who said, okay, I'm going to spend thousands of euros or levers on a certain activity and then I will not see any benefits for six or ten months. It is quite difficult. Ultimately, digital marketing, although there are platforms such as affiliates uh, and they are much more sort of direct marketing driven uh, approaches, they are not always as specific for everything else. So there is a great model, again, unfortunately Bulgaria isn't one of the countries, but there is a great model uh, available uh, by Google that's called Think with Google, customer journey to online purchase. And essentially they mapped the journey of an individual making a purchase decision on average using different channels. And it suggests how important a particular channel is compared to a purchase decision. So for example, if something is further away, on the left, so display click advertising, social media, it is less effective in terms of making the purchase decision than say organic search engine optimization or email marketing. This doesn't mean that you don't have to do social media. This means that they, all the channels that you have have a different purpose for your uh, communication. And that's really important to understand that whenever you are on social media, you are trying to socialize people. It's almost like going to a restaurant. You don't say, oh, I'm going to be sending you this, sending you this, how about buying my products? But you are wanting to engage with people. You want to find out what they're interested in, what are their challenges, and obviously say, well, by the way, you know, there is a really amazing product X that might be of uh, benefit to you. So we nail down the channels and then the last but not least, and this is the most important one, is data. So when you are trying to engage in digital marketing communications, it's really important for you as an organization to see how that channel is working, how the communication is working. So some very basic tools that we suggest, and this is going forward with all the social media activities. I'm not sure what Olga will say afterwards, but she might correct me. Uh, ultimately, what we suggest is that your blog or company website is one of the prime assets that you should be focusing your activity on. Facebook might be really important today, but what happens about uh, Facebook tomorrow, and if Facebook changes its algorithm again, how will you engage with those people going forward? So you have less control of those social networks that are beyond your website. Whereas the website that you have and the blog that you might have on your website, you have full control of, and that is where the energy should ideally be spent on uh, going forward in terms of the generating the biggest return investment. Obviously, this is not to say that uh, YouTube, Pinterest, or F uh, Twitter are not as important, but ultimately, if you were to think about the purposes, that's uh, obviously something to bear in mind in data gathering. How many of you heard or see people that is called hippos? Highest paid person's opinion? 
how many of you are hippos, I apologize, this is not uh, in derogative in any way. But unfortunately, there are times in organizations when somebody senior has to make a decision. And that senior person will be somebody such as the Bulgarian National Channel or the NHS service providers. That person is not fully digitally aware of things going on in the real world, perhaps in the world that they've lived on, say, things have changed, but they might be not on, on the latest thinking. And that person, unfortunately, sometimes has to make a decision that will impact the direction for an, organi an organization. And from your point of view, if you are in digital marketing or if you are that hippo, being open to be uh, thinking about, well, if you are the hippo, congratulations, you are the highest paid person, so that, that's, that's an achievement in its own right. But ultimately, being open to data and being open to data giving you some insight and directing your activities is quite important. Because ultimately, if you have no sales coming in, despite the fact that you spend a lot of money on TV advertising, or if you have quite a lot of engagement on social media, just coming in now, but it's not necessarily translating into sales. It isn't necessarily the bad thing going forward. So data is very important, and that's the point that we're trying to say here. So ultimately, data, channels, and content have to be regularly uh, reviewed and regularly monitored, and this is where there is the skill of a digital marketer comes in, being able to take in all the different channels, different communications, make sense of these, and constantly review. And in the old days of uh, you know, project management, you had a project, we said we're going to do this, we're going to go through all these stages, and then we'll arrive at where we want to be. And digital marketing is much more agile. We are talking about an iterative process. You do very quick uh, uh, experimentation, see if it works. If it doesn't work, you sort of iterate, and then hopefully you arrive uh, uh, somewhere um, where, which helps you. So this comes to the uh, strategy document template. Digital marketing strategies, and we work with a number of large and small organizations, end up with documents that are 50, 60 pages long. And once they have been produced, the best place for them in the filing cabinet that nobody ever pulls out and obviously never reads, which is not really useful for you if you spend weeks of time researching, developing a strategy. And just having the fact that you have got a strategy somewhere filed, it isn't going to be very useful. So what we are suggesting in, in this book and uh, in, in our research is that if you have developed a digital marketing strategy, the best thing that you should do is to be able to summarize the work that you've created in a single A4 sheet which uh, lays down the five channels, well, the five uh, uh, factors, so the business objectives on the left, the buyer persona, the person you're targeting, the content areas, the things that you want to be talking about with your target audience going forward, Channels, so for example, if you are going to VBOX or uh, Facebook for your engagement. Key performance indicators, so the data, things that you might be capturing, how will you measure that you're on the right track? So for example, when you're driving a car, it's very important for you to think about well, how fast you're going. Are you able to reach place B if you're going at the same speed? If you're not, perhaps you need to think about. And then strategic keyword terms, and this is very important for search and optimization in particular. And ultimately, the lower half of this, you would set up the strategic keyword, uh, well, strategic marketing projects that will help you to refine the upper half of your strategy. So you might need to say, right, for the first quarter of our year, we we're going to do X, Y, and Z, review it, and then see if our strategy is working or not. So there is no point in spending months developing a strategy and then realizing sort of. Uh, two years down the line that it's actually not working. So it's better to do something that's uh, taking you two weeks, but you refine it as the years along, uh, uh, progress, and obviously that's much more agile. So the concept that we've developed in this book uh, and over the years is the buying persona spring. And the idea is that from marketing point is that you are trying to bring the organization on, and the buying persona closer together. And the content, the channels, and the data are the tools and the things that you will be able to use to bring your buying persona to your uh, organization. And ultimately, that is uh, sort of further explored in, in the book going forward. The exciting thing about the book, they've got 20 authors, which is for those of you who have tried to write with two people and agree between them, that is a challenge. But we have 20 people from, have lost count how many countries we have. And obviously, we have quite as many advisors externally. I believe just one chapter had about 20 advisors on it so, who didn't agree on things as well. So the exciting thing is that it is finally going to be released in November 2017. 
So in addition to the book, we have also created a free online course, which is the massive open online course uh, going forward. So, and I shall just uh, briefly play a video here. Do you know what good digital marketing is? Marketing is all around us. Individuals and organizations constantly competing for our attention. Marketeers are trying to get our attention from the time we wake up in the morning to the time we go to bed at night. Good digital marketing is understanding your target audience. This course will provide you to basic principles to digital and social media marketing. The key three points will be long-term planning, day-to-day -day operations, and continuous improvement of your marketing activities. Digital marketing is a dynamic and evolving subject, and its adoption and evolution changes from place to place and from technology to technology. We're going to explore how individuals and organisations communicate with one another using digital tools. This course is unique since it draws on our original research from five European countries. We've got the UK, Salford Business School, Bulgaria, University of National and World Economy, Greece, City College, Poland, University of Łódź, Lithuania, Kaunas University of Technology. This international dimension of the passion for digital community offers you the similarities and differences when it comes to digital marketing used in different countries. We're also drawing on examples from real industry practitioners who will share with you how they use digital marketing today. If you're an individual looking for a career or you're a business wanting to improve your digital marketing opportunities, this MOOC is for you. Just out of curiosity, how many of you have seen this MOOC or benefited from it already? The MOOC will be released and in, in re-released in, in, in the next couple of uh, months. And the first time we ran it last September, we had 14,000 people from around the world, which is quite a phenomenal number of people who are trying to learn from this experience. And we're really grateful for the feedback that we received. Obviously, it wasn't perfect. You see, we're applying the same digital, agile type of activity. But we've worked on that feedback, and we think the next MOOC will be even better. And uh, we've also been quite successful in uh, getting a recognition for this MOOC. So we've been able to, uh, we've been finalists in four digital industry awards, one of which is the Digital Leaders 100. Okay, well, last point from me uh, before, if you have any questions, is that if you are using your preferred social network, please feel free to use the hash Passion for Digital. Do you mind to introduce yourself as well, if, you, if that's okay? Uh, okay, I'm uh, Rosen. I have a personal website which is about me and some social interactions with other people. Okay. So uh, would you share some advice about uh, marketing that uh, website on Facebook? On Facebook? Yes. Okay. Well, obviously, Facebook is the most preferred way of communication in Bulgaria. So the biggest thing in terms of uh, Facebook is the algorithm has changed in the last four or five years. So in the past, if you had a Facebook page, so I guess do you have a personal Facebook page or organizational Facebook page? It's a personal Facebook page personal Facebook about page. Uh, going to different events with different people. Okay. So, so it's networking. Something, okay. So it's something like meetup.com if you have heard about them. Uh -huh. Yeah. Meetup, meetup obviously has an amazing infrastructure to sell and promote events. So for example, for today's events, Facebook was used extensively. But uh, ultimately, uh, so the basic way of approaching any communications on Facebook is have a scheduled calendar, understand what kind of events coming up, think about the posts that you might want to share with your target audiences for about those particular uh, uh, sort of uh, events and then think about which posts are working well so for example the people that have uh, engaged with that post uh, in the most organic way and if you have the budget perhaps use some of that budget to amplify the content going forward and uh, that's just the one very basic way of uh, advice uh, just uh, not knowing your, your website. Hello, I'm Raya Holiday and I'm owner of Mitka Creative uh, we are creating brands and websites so my question is about the buyer persona. As I work with new brands and I'm creating them, how can I establish a correct buyer persona? Brilliant. Uh, buyer persona is crucial, obviously, as, as I mentioned earlier with the Facebook question, to try and understand what your business need is. Uh, understanding the buyer persona, there are multiple sources that you could use. One very simple one is to search social media networks and see for a particular, do the brands exist already or is it new brands? So you're creating brand new brands, okay. So try and understand who would be purchasing those goods and services. Perhaps you will be able to look at, 
yeah, so you, you would be trying to look at the competitors. So you can try and see who competes with those organizations. So that could be a first point to see who is talking to them or not. So for example, for Facebook, you can follow Facebook pages of your competitors and see what kind of content works, what content doesn't work. For Twitter, there is something that's called follower wonk, and so that gives you sort of the understanding of the, bio, the engagement on, on, on Twitter. Most other social networks give you a similar way of summarizing the, the activities for those people. And look, at, look out for questions that people have. So what are they really interested in? What is the biggest challenge or biggest problem? And obviously that's going to feed to your buyer persona. So try and establish their so the biggest pain points for competitors, the exciting thing for you to find is what is your competitors really bad at? So if people are complaining about a certain hotel, I don't know why I use hotels. Uh, this hotel is amazing, by the way. Uh, if they're using some complaining about your competitors and how that uh, complaint could be used and addressed in your uh, content creation going forward. Uh, use tools such as Answer the Public. So for example, if you type in a keyword related to your brand, Answer the Public gives you some suggested topics that are related to that. So they just give you far more information on this. And you cannot replace speaking to actual people who might be the brand customers. So have a focus group with five people, buy them a cup of tea or coffee or preferred beverage, and uh, they will give you some ideas. Does that sort of help? <laughs> OK, thank you. Uh, there was a question. Hello, my name is uh, Teodora Georgieva. I'm a student in the University of National and World Economy. And my question is, uh, you said that uh, blogs and websites are very important for your uh, organization. Uh, but you know that's like a more passive digital channel. You uh, create some content and you put it on your website, uh, but uh, is it more, are the channels uh, from which you're sharing your um, content from your blog or website more important? Absolutely. Uh, and so how do you find the right channels? Like, is it going to be Facebook or YouTube uh, or something else? Okay. Well, from from the importance point of view, the point I was trying to make is that this is from strategic importance. That doesn't mean that you should be ignoring the channels going out. So this diagram shows you that the more emphasis should be uh, focusing on blogs. And once you've written your blog, the content of your blog should then be amplified. So share it on Facebook, share it on um, you know, Pinterest, uh, any other social network that is out there. So the idea is that all the traffic that is then coming from those particular networks is then coming back closer to your purchase decision to your website. So that's, that's the first question. In terms of how do you find the best channels? As I mentioned before about the experimentation, you need to try out different types of content. Uh, if you haven't got any present uh, activities already, look at your competitors. There is something that's called the skyscraper technique. See what content works best for your competitors. Learn from that content. Improve on it. Don't just copy and paste. But improve on that content. Make it better, bigger, faster, whatever it is supposed to be doing and then share it on your website and then amplify it through other social networks that you have. So this is not to say that you should stop using Facebook, but what I'm saying is that be conscious that the energy that you spend should be focused on your activity on the main channels rather than just uh, on, on your uh, more closer to your website rather than just going to uh, Facebook or any other activities. I am Nikolai Tanasov, associate professor from uh, University of San Zotar of Burgas. And my question to you, uh, firstly, uh, congratulations for uh, your great presentation. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, very interesting uh, knowledge uh, in it. Uh, my question, uh, questions to you is, uh, firstly, uh, is there any special uh, word or name of uh, uh, your kind management uh, as educational approach and as uh, research approach uh, to digital uh, uh, marketing uh, okay. uh, uh, situation and uh, theory and uh, practices uh, contemporary, in contemporary meaning. Mm -hmm. And uh, second question is, um, uh, what do you think about the perspectives of changes of the uh, the theoretical and practical aspects of uh, uh, this uh, special area of information society, mm -hmm. uh, agenda, uh, uh, digital agenda of uh, Europe, 
uh, as a um, new kind of uh, uh, thinking, mm. new kind of uh, uh, understanding, of cons considering yeah. of the um, uh, digital uh, information uh, okay. on the level of uh, contemporary uh, technological uh, um, results and uh, knowledge. The answer is that I'm really glad to sort of have one of my PhD students with me today, Sophie, I don't know if you want to wave to this gentleman. She's actually researching uh, on ethics of uh, digital industry and the associated practices that are happening there. So that's one of the sort of topics that is actually quite interesting. The approach that we're using there is action research. So we're trying to see and practice and implement some of the activities that are, are happening and uh, obviously, uh, shaping that sort of development because it is very fast moving. It's very difficult for us to do something like interviews and then just go away. So a longitudinal approach seems to be much more appropriate. So from our research, uh, from our project point of view, every four, five, six months, we went to a different European country and we had sessions similar to this, listening to companies' uh, challenges and opinions and then see, trying to see whether what we're doing is still right or not. Uh, we also uh, suggested to use and reach out to industry and then engage with those things in a much more so the research uh, at academic level tends to be sort of ivory towers. We sit in the lab, we don't do anything else, but uh, there is some colleagues of ours working on social network analysis. So SNA is becoming a really good, rich insight and a really good source of data for people to want to do research. So almost in the same way that the pie persona will be constructed by a person. From a researcher's point of view, this is really great depth of activities going forward. Artificial intelligence is another avenue that digital marketing, so for example, those of you who are trying to work with the Facebook or, or well, Google's algorithm is now publicly uh, acknowledged to be uh, based partially on artificial uh, intelligence, so they are trying to feed results on how artificial intelligence improves search results. So that's another amazing th topic going forward. So as you can see, there are quite a number of computer science, social science, and a number of different sciences that might question the exciting opportunities that digital marketing offers. And my personal approach that I prefer is action research that involves some real implementation of some of the results and uh, that's uh, going forward. But as I said, I'm happy to have a chat with you afterwards and Sophie, perhaps the best person to talk to you as well. Brilliant. Thank you very much.